Let's do an example of drawing a Lewis structure for phosphorus trichloride. And what we're going to start with is adding up the valence electrons for the molecule. So we're going to look at each atom in the molecule and add the valence electrons that it is contributing. So phosphorus contributes five. It's in group five. So five valence electrons from phosphorus. We see that we have three chlorine atoms and each one of those is going to contribute seven electrons. So, so we can see that chlorine is in group seven, so it contributes seven valence electrons. Phosphorus contributes five, it's in group five. When we add those up, we're going to end up with 26 valence electrons. Now the next thing we do is connect the outer atoms to the central atom with a single bond. So let's put phosphorus in the middle here and we're going to bond each chlorine to the phosphorus with a single bond. And each of those bonds is worth two electrons. So if we count up how many electrons we've used so far, we have three single bonds, so we've used six valence electrons. Now what we need to do is distribute the rest of the electrons on the outer atoms first and if we have any extra electrons, we're going to go ahead and put those on the central atom. So I'm going to change colors and I'm going to add, we're going to add the rest of our electrons. So we've used six. So let's keep on going. So eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, and then we have two left, so we have to put them on the central atom. And there we are, 26. Now, the next step is to look at each of the atoms in the molecule and make sure that everybody has an octet. So each atom in the molecule has eight electrons surrounding it. So we look at the chlorines and we see that they each have three lone pairs and a bond, so that's eight electrons. If we look at phosphorus, we see three bonds, that's six electrons, plus that lone pair. So that's eight electrons around phosphorus. So all the octets are satisfied in phosphorus trichloride now. Okay? So the last thing that we want to do is calculate the formal charge. And so all of the chlorines are equivalent, so we can just do it once for chlorine. And remember, you calculate formal charge by taking the number of valence electrons, so we get that from the periodic table, minus the number of electrons assigned in the structure. And so we assign electrons for formal charge by breaking each of the bonds and giving one electron to each atom in the bond. Okay, so for each chlorine phosphorus bond, chlorine gets one of those electrons and phosphorus gets the other. So if we go ahead and count up now for one of the chlorines, just pick whichever one you want, but they each have six electrons as three lone pairs, plus they have that one electron that they get from splitting the bond. So the formal charge for chlorine is seven valence electrons, get that from the periodic table, minus the number assigned, which is six as lone pairs, plus that one, so seven, seven assigned, and that's gonna give a formal charge of zero for chlorine. And again, since all of the chlorines have the same bonding pattern, we only need to calculate the formal charge once for chlorine. Now phosphorus, Let's go ahead and calculate the formal charge for phosphorus. If we look on the periodic table, we see that phosphorus has five valence electrons. It's in group five. And when we look at the division of electrons and the ones assigned, phosphorus has a lone pair, so that's two. And then it gets one from each of those bonds. So two, three, four, five. So five electrons assigned and phosphorus also has a formal charge of zero.